Should you buy Shadow of Mordor in 2021? We will be talking narrative and gameplay with no spoilers. There are no spoilers in this video. All gameplay is from the first two hours. Welcome to my Shadow of Mordor review. I already reviewed Shadow of War this year, and going back to Shadow of Mordor really points out how much the narrative improved in Shadow of War compared to Shadow of Mordor, but that doesn't mean the narrative is bad, it's just very generic. Shadow of Mordor goes down the revenge route with the character of Talion played by Troy Baker and Keller Brimbor played by Alistair Duncan, and both provide a decent performance, but nothing particularly memorable. And it really does leave you with the feeling of wanting more, especially from the character of Talion, as the story really plays into Talion's mind state, but it ne it's never really felt due to the writing and pacing of the story. Writing is pretty generic, bad guy crosses good guy, good guy gets mad and wants revenge, and during the good guy's journey you meet people that help the good guy. That really does sum up the story here, and while it's not bad, you don't really want to play Shadow of Mordor for its narrative, or at least its main narrative. What do you mean, classic game reviews? Well, the actual name's Jack, but that doesn't really matter. Basically, the best thing about Shadow of Mordor is the Nemesis system that was heavily improved in Shadow of War, but it's still terrific here. You can basically create your own mini-stories with randomised enemies that you come across, creating full-on revenge stories yourself, or even redemption arcs, and it's incredibly fun. I will talk more about the gameplay aspect of it in a few minutes, but the stories this system can provide for your imagination are easily the best bits of narrative of the game, which is just absolutely insane and so damn unique, which is something I rarely get to say in these reviews. The main narrative have more in-depth characters, at least the little amount of depth they actually get, but the real Oscar-winning narrative here is the Nemesis system, and the more time I got to spend playing with it, and the, the more I loved it. And surprisingly, it just never got repetitive, even after all these years, and playing Shadow of War. The system in Shadow of Mordor is just still so damn strong and makes these games so unique compared to its competition. Pacing of the main narrative is confusing to say the least, at least in the traditional traditional sense, because the story itself is very, it's very short, much shorter than Shadow of War, and yet I think overall it benefits the game heavily, because the less time you spend playing through the main narrative, the more fun you're going to have. So the narrative is easily the weakest aspect of both games, so if you are expecting another narrative at the same level as The Lord of the Rings, this is not it. It's like the Ant-Man films, it exists, but it's really not needed, but at the same time it's a part of the overall lore, so it has to exist now. The Nemesis system is the best piece of narrative in Shadow of Mordor, and you can make it all up in your own head, and you know, I really enjoyed that aspect, so the traditional narrative isn't great, but the Nemesis system is, so if that sounds like your kind of game blending actual gameplay with narrative without ludo-narrative dissonance, then you can actually have a lot of fun with Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War's story element. What do you guys think though? Would you pick Shadow of Mordor up for its narrative, or have you already played Shadow of Mordor? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, you can check out my Shadow of War review to hear about the improvements made in terms of narrative quality. Also, leave a like if you are enjoying or find this review helpful, it helps out tremendously to please the YouTube overlords of Sauron. Shadow of Mordor's gameplay systems are pretty close to perfect if you don't count the AI. The combat is fluid and addicting, the upgrade systems are fleshed out pretty well but not overwhelming, and the stealth, while way too easy, is really fun to commit to. There are a few bugs here and there, but it usually works really well. The upgrade systems are so much fun to commit to, as they are either connected to challenges you have to complete for your sword, bow or dagger, focusing on combat stealth and range kills, and are extremely fun to play through, and actually reward you with stuff you can actually use which improves the gameplay systems further, which unfortunately is quite rare in games today. Skills are connected to the Nemesis system and something called power, and it's used to level up your character over the course of the game, which makes the Nemesis system not only fun, but productive, and really brings that system just all together, like, it's like, it's like a, it's just, it's wonderful, I love that system. Sure, it's obvious Shadow of Mordor is heavily inspired by the Batman Arkham games, which seems to be a trend on this channel at this point, but it's true, the combat system is just great, and the skills you unlock improve it further, like critical hits, dagger throws, and more executions, the ability to mount animals roaming the world like caragors, and much more. So the system, while limiting at times, has some really good depth to it, and is incredibly fun to level up, as you always feel like you're progressing to something worthwhile. Enemy variety is pretty good as well, and is very similar to Arkham once again. The only big difference this time around is the Nemesis system, offering basically what are mini-bosses that roam across the world of Mordor with different abilities and weaknesses, and you never really know what you're going to run into, and trust me, some of these guys are really OP, but you are too, so it's a nice balance. They all have their own personality traits and are really fun to watch to see how they would react to different things you do. 
Let's look over your shoulder from now on. <laughs> oh, it's gonna haunt you like a shadow. Hey, he said shadow, because shadow of Mordor. That's funny, right? Gameplay wise, it gets better because a lot of these bosses actually come back to life and adapt to the tactics you used against them. So if you stun them often, they will now be invulnerable to stuns. And it really does spice the gameplay, constantly making you think of new tactics to take these guys out. <laughs> Because eventually it will feel like they are immune to anything you throw at them until you find that one tactic, that one move that will finally end them permanently and it's so damn cool. Main missions however are really, really bad. Like really boring and easy and I often felt like I would be having a lot more fun playing through the Nemesis system rather than playing through the main story. The best way I can describe them without spoilers is think about every kind of mission you hate in Assassin's Creed like tailing missions, and multiply them with the occasional fight encounter. We come to blows as far back as Ratback can remember. Still, Ratback never wins. Last time, he kicks Ratback into the category pit. All the others laugh as a caribou bats Ratback around like a yarn ball. Oh, that is that's really how it feels most of the time, and so not only is the main narrative very lacklustre, but the main missions are too, and it just shows how much Shadow of War improved on the original. Stealth is cool, and you gain a load of abilities like Shadow Strike to really spice it up, but it's not really difficult because the AI is incredibly dumb, very similar to Assassin's Creed games once again. And you could honestly play these stealth sections with a blindfold, so I was happy to find out a lot of the enemies in the Nemesis system are invulnerable to stealth, so it's pretty obvious the developers knew how easy the stealth really was, so if you want an in-depth stealth system, this really isn't it. There are also loot drops from the enemies you wipe out from the Nemesis system, adding further depth to the upgrade system, adding so many different combinations from being immune to poison, to being able to set enemies on fire once your combo reaches a certain level. So there's so much variation when it comes to your abilities, and sure, there is a hell of a lot more in the sequel of Shadow of War, but what you get for the price Shadow of Mordor is currently selling at is beyond reasonable. Shadow of Mordor may not have a great narrative, but what you get gameplay wise, and let's be honest that's why we play games rather than watch movies, is really fantastic and offers a really great unique experience that you really can't get from any other franchise out there. So will you be buying Shadow of Mordor, or have you already bought it? Let me know down below, as well as your likes and dislikes about the franchise. I think you should absolutely buy Shadow of Mordor in 2021. It's absolutely worth your money in 2021. Thank you for watching.